Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Paulina. In today's video, I want to talk about pregnancy in Germany. So I assume everyone who is watching are ladies. So congratulations if you found out you're pregnant or if you're just planning, this video will be useful for you if you're living in Germany or planning to move here. I'm actually now on 37th week of pregnancy and honestly, I have absolutely nothing to compare it to. This is my first time pregnancy and I never was pregnant in other countries, so I have no idea how it is in other countries. I do think that this system in Germany is quite unique and I'm generally really, really happy with how this whole thing went and is still going. Not finished yet, but I'm coming close to the end of pregnancy and I will probably make another video specifically about giving birth in Germany. So yeah, stay tuned for that. But yeah, let's dive into it. Basically, we will be talking about the medical aspect of it, how it's all organized, with German hospitals, German health insurance, prenatal classes. And also I will talk a little bit about the financial help um, after, after birth because it's a very complicated topic. And honestly, when I found out I was pregnant, I was so overwhelmed with everything. I just didn't know where to begin to even research all this stuff. So hopefully this video will be kind of a summary. Of course, still every situation is different and I'm not going to be able to cover absolutely everything. I want to give you a disclaimer that everything that I will be talking about will be basically based on like the most generic scenario with normal employment in Germany, with a normal governmental hospital, governmental insurance and so on. So the most, the most basic scenario, if you are freelancer if you are unemployed or there is any like other specifics about your living situation in Germany you will have to research those things specifically but for me I went for the most generic scenario basically no home birth or anything like that so yeah that's that's kind of what I want to share with you so let's dive into it so first of all let's talk about insurance and you know, when you find out basically that you are pregnant. So if you have been living in Germany for a while and you are employed in Germany, so you're working full time, you have a health insurance in Germany. And in Germany, you can have a private insurance or you can have a state insurance. I have a state insurance, which was basically something that I was entitled to with my work contract. So I didn't really have to organize any of this uh, by myself. It was all done by my employer. So that's how it usually works. So if you've been living in Germany for a while and you are employed, you will have, yeah, you will have an option of a state insurance. So with this state insurance, you will have a certain basic number of things that are covered by this insurance. And this includes quite a lot of things that are involved in pregnancy. I mean, I didn't have to pay for anything in terms of like actual medical checks or procedures in a German hospital. So everything has been covered. Again, basic, I mean, there are always things that you can additionally purchase, like additional 3D ultrasounds and I don't know, certain more in-depth checks about pregnancy. You can always, you know, find these additional things and they will not be covered by the state insurance, but all of the basic things that you need to have a normal, healthy uh, pregnancy and have everything checked regularly, everything is covered by the state insurance. So yeah, that's really great. So the first step when you find out you're pregnant, you have to go and take an appointment at your gynecologist. If you already had one, that's great. You can just continue with the same person. If you don't have one yet, you can just research and find it. Basically, uh, when I found out I was pregnant, I only just had moved to Germany like some months before and I didn't have honestly anything set up. I was never in a hospital by then yet. I didn't even know how it all, all works here. So yeah, for me, everything was kind of overwhelming in the beginning. But basically what I did, I just googled gynecologists in my town, found some options. It was, you know, there were several names from the normal state hospital from my town. And I just chose one person, took an appointment in there and yeah, went there basically when I found out I was pregnant. So yeah, you find out you're pregnant, you choose a gynecologist if you don't have one and you make an appointment and you go for your first checkup. On this first checkup, they will confirm your pregnancy. They actually did a vaginal ultrasound in my first appointment, which was maybe on week seven or eight, something like that, which honestly was really surprising. I really didn't expect to see the screen like 
I just went there just to tell them basically that I'm pregnant. But yeah, they actually made an ultrasound and gave me a photo, which was quite cool. But yeah, I don't know if this is like a normal procedure or this was just specifically my hospital. But in general, I think in Germany, they do quite a lot of ultrasounds, which is which has been nice. So again, they confirm your pregnancy. They will ask you if you have any questions. Uh, this is a time when you can ask all kinds of questions like what are you allowed to eat, to drink, uh, what are the restrictions and so on and stuff. And they will explain you how it all works uh, from then on, how often you will have checks, what they will be checking and so on and so on. On the first appointment, they will also create you a motor pass, which is just a little book uh, where they will put all the information about your pregnancy and you will have to take this book with you everywhere basically during your pregnancy on every appointment and so on. So from then on you will have appointments every four weeks. Every month you will have an appointment with your gynecologist and they will also take your blood test, your pressure, they will weight you. Am I missing something? I, I think that's pretty much it. But you don't have to memorize all this. Basically they will guide you and they will lead you. They will just schedule your appointments every four weeks and you just have to show up at the correct time and that's it. Then they will really take it over and they will lead you, which is really great. Like, as I said, like in the beginning, it can be really overwhelming, but then you just realize that you are taken step by step. You don't really have to think of anything or take care of anything by yourself. So in terms of ultrasounds, I think in Germany in general, you're entitled to three official big ultrasounds, uh, one on week 12, another one around week 20, and another one around week 30, 32, I want to say. So these are the official ultrasounds. But honestly, apart from these ultrasounds, I had maybe three more. I'm not sure, like I had quite many ultrasounds sounds. They made me another one just now on the week 36 to check the position of the baby. They did one, as I said, like in the very, very first appointment, which is which was not really like something official. So yeah, basically I had quite a lot of ultrasounds, but I think in Germany in general, you will have at least three official ultrasounds. After around week 30, instead of having an appointment every one month, uh, you will have an appointment scheduled every two weeks. So it gets more frequent and they start to check uh, some more things. So on these later appointments, uh, apart from a regular checkup with your gynecologist and the blood test and so on, you will also have a ZTG test, which is basically to monitor the baby's heartbeat and the contractions activity. And this ZTG test actually lasts 30 minutes. So you're just sitting there, they put monitors on your belly, one for the baby's heartbeat and one for tracking a possible contractions activity. I think this is called EKG in English. Uh, yeah, just a really standard procedure, but you're there for quite a while and this check become more frequent. So you spend quite a lot of time in the hospital by the end of the pregnancy. And since we're talking about uh, these later weeks now, uh, here I want to mention as well a little bit about how maternity leave looks like in Germany. So you basically stop working at least six weeks before the approximate due date. And then you have a maternity leave for eight more weeks where if you have been employed, you will be getting your full salary, which is really great. And yeah, later, actually, I will talk a little bit more about the financial help. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that at this time, after around week 34, you are not working anymore. So you do have time to, to go for these checks and to really start preparing things for your baby, which is really nice. And actually, I also had some vacations that I didn't get to use during the year. So I stopped working at around week 32. And yeah, that's why I'm recording this video now in the middle of the day. So yeah, this is basically how the appointments go, the medical aspect of it. As I said, everything is free with these uh, monthly checks. And yeah, I didn't have to pay for anything. Now, one special thing about German pregnancy is midwives. So basically you are entitled to have a midwife, uh, which you can consult with and talk to during your pregnancy, apart from 
you know, these regular checks, which is really, really nice. And this midwife service is also going to be covered by your insurance, even by the state one, like in my case. So honestly, for me, I mean, if you're from the States, you're probably like really familiar with the whole concept of midwife. For me, this is something that I'm, I come from Russia and I lived in Europe for the past 10 years. I was not really aware of the whole concept of midwives. I thought it was something like from the States and I thought that this is really something additional that you can hire, uh, yeah, like separately that has nothing to do with governmental facilities and so on. And I don't know how it is in other countries, but here in Germany, it appeared that midwives or hebamen, it's something that really every hospital has and every person is every pregnant person is entitled to in their pregnancy. And yeah, I think it's a really, really great concept, especially after birth. I mean, I don't have that experience yet, but I think it's especially useful after birth. But basically you can have a midwife and it will be covered by your insurance. And the job of Hebami is basically to just help you out in this journey, to answer any questions that you may have. They actually sometimes can also take over some of the appointments uh, that you have that otherwise you would have in a hospital at your gynecologist so not every appointment uh, has you know ultrasound and like really specific things some appointments are really really generic where you come and they basically ask you do you have any questions do you have any problems they take your urine uh, sample and stuff like that so this is something that a, a midwife could totally do uh, by just coming to your house so you can also always email them or call them if you have any doubts if you have any questions and yeah it's really really useful because you cannot call your gynecologist directly in german hospital you just call basically a reception you know to take an appointment and stuff like that but you cannot just consult your gynecologist for whatever doubt you have and that's what the midwives are for so how do you find a herbami basically you just have to do your own research there are websites with kind of like a database of all the midwives in your area where you can put yeah the postal code of where you're living and you will have you know a list of midwives um in that area you can also probably have a list that will be given to you by your gynecologist that's what i had at least at one of my appointments in the beginning of my pregnancy my gynecologist just gave me uh, this little booklet with a list of midwives in our town which were like a part of the hospital system if that makes sense so they were not just kind of private midwives that were working separately but they were actually you know, like a part of the hospital. And I could just choose one of them to to be my midwife, but I, I actually chose another one just by doing my own research in the internet, just Googling. And yeah, I found one midwife that I really liked who also did some prenatal courses. And, you know, I just resonated with her more and I picked her as my hebame. And yeah, basically my checks with her would be covered by the insurance. But here is the tricky part about Hebame in Germany. You basically have this person, your midwife, for the length of your pregnancy. But once you are given birth, you cannot pick her. You cannot pick that person to accompany you during birth. Basically, if you are given birth in a hospital, which is what I'm going to do, you know, you're not doing home birth or anything like that. You cannot pick who is going to be on shift and who is going to be assisting you during labor. So basically, it just depends on who is working that day at which time you arrive to the hospital and there will be uh, a person who will assist you. And from the comments that I've read, uh, at least in my town, and again, I live in a really, really average small German town. <laughs> the reviews are really, really good. And people say that the attitude, the attention is really, really nice in a hospital during labor. So yeah, I think that um, it's really not a problem that uh, th there is something, somebody that you don't actually know that well. And depending on who is that person assisting you during labor, they will also become your midwife after birth. I'm not sure if you can actually like still pick another one after that, but the person who will be assisting you on a labor, they also become your midwife after birth. Birth. And that's, I think, much more important and much more useful than, you know, the role of midwife during pregnancy. Because after birth, you are 
overwhelmed, you are tired, you actually don't know how things work and you have a midwife that will be coming to your house who will be helping you with breastfeeding, with giving you any tips. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what else because I'm not there yet. But so that's about midwives in Germany. Another thing that I wanted to mention is prenatal classes, which is also there is a whole world of that, which really amazed me, especially in the beginning. Basically, there are quite a bit of options of, you know, like different courses that you can take and prenatal classes that you can take uh, during pregnancy and after birth as well. And uh, some of them are also covered by the insurance. Not everything though, but some of them. And these courses again are led by midwives, some of who might be working in your hospital or, you know, like just private ones. So again, when I found out I was pregnant, and I realized that I have to find a, a midwife and so on. I just basically googled midwives in my town and I found their website. And this was again uh, a part of hospital. So it was not, you know, just a private kind of thing. It was a part of the hospital and there was a team of midwives who have this little room. It's called Hebamishtube in the hospital. And different women provide different classes. There are birth preparation classes, there is swimming for pregnancy, there is yoga for pregnancy and there is a lot of other additional things like acupuncture and massage for pregnancy and these sort of things. Depending on your insurance of course more things can be covered or less things can be covered so if you do have a private more expensive insurance definitely check with them because maybe they they yeah they cover quite a lot of things but statutory insurance definitely covers at least a basic birth preparation course i mean of course you can find all kinds of birth preparation courses in the internet online in any language and you know my german is actually not very good but i still thought it would be a really good idea for me to do this course specifically at my hospital because i wanted to have a more local perspective for example they tell you what to pack in the hospital bag and I really want to know what they advise me to take to the hospital bag because it depends what my hospital will provide and also to meet other people right to meet other ladies who are also pregnant in your town and it's a great way to kind of just make connections but generally honestly I'm really happy that there was a selection of these courses because again I live in a very small town in Germany and I honestly before this really struggled with finding things to do like I really couldn't find a nice yoga studio for myself and this sort of things but I was so genuinely like positively surprised with the selection of pregnancy courses that uh, that my town offers I really didn't expect that the swimming course that I did was amazing. The yoga course that I found is really, really good as well. The birth preparation course, I don't like that much, but there is always different things. And I was just unlucky with the one that I picked. <sighs> what else? So next one, I want to talk a little bit about maternity leave and financial, basically parental allowance that they have in Germany. Because again, when I found out I was pregnant, I was so overwhelmed and I had a lot of anxiety about this. And this is a, a, a huge topic, so you will have to make your own research. But I would like to just give you some idea if you have no clue at all how it works here. So as I mentioned before already, maternity leave. Uh, in Germany is officially 12 weeks that's six weeks not 14 weeks sorry you stop working six weeks before your approximate due date and you have eight weeks of maternity leave after birth all this is for a normal regular uh, birth not premature birth um, not complicated or twins birth or anything like that just a normal regular birth and during this 14 weeks you get your full salary this amount is going to be basically partially paid by your insurance and then the rest the remaining amount has to be matched by your employer yeah to meet the exactly the same you know salary amount that you had before so this is the maternity leave and after that basically you can either go to work if you choose to or you can of course stay uh, longer with your baby which is what everyone does because I mean what are you supposed to do with a two months uh, old right and you make a request uh, to the government 
to pay you parental allowance, which in German is called Elterngeld. And this Elterngeld is going to be basically the the financial help that you'll be getting from the German government while you are taking care of your baby. This is a kind of a tricky one. There is different nuances, right? As I said, you're gonna have to make your own research. It all depends on how long you've been working, how many, how much taxes you've been paying, right? Um, how high is your salary? But to give you an idea, more or less, depending on your salary, you will be getting around 65% of your salary per month as Elterngeld. And even if you have never worked in Germany in your life, you will still be getting a basic amount, which I believe is 300 euros per month. And the maximum amount of Elterngeld that they pay to anyone really, even if you have a really higher salary, it's 1,800. And in addition to that, you also have Kindergeld, which is yeah child money, which is a kind of a set amount that I also additionally pay uh, every month, which is around 200. Um, it's changing now. It's like increasing this year a little bit uh, because of the inflation and stuff, but it's around 215, 250, somewhere around that amount. I'm not entirely sure yet because I haven't uh, yeah, I haven't requested any of that yet because all this you have to request after you actually give birth. So another thing about this, it's Elternzeit, which is the same thing. So you have a maternity leave for the first 14 weeks and after that, what you get is Elternzeit. And that's when you get this Elterngeld financial help from the government. This Elternzeit is a maximum of 14 months altogether for you and your partner if you both want to take it right so if you for example want to do it together with your husband for the first few months then you yourself can only get the remaining 10 months or whatever it is that's that's left right but 14 months is the maximum for both of you for you and your partner if you want to do it together and yeah so basically from seeing other people other german people and talking with other people i saw that most people most women actually take one year of parental leave altogether because that's the time that you need to take care of your baby and only after one year you can uh, bring your kid to the daycare so most kindergarten they're not called kindergartens they're called here kinderkrippe uh, most of them actually only accept kids from one year. If you live in a bigger city, I'm sure you can find other options, maybe from six months. Where I live, again, checking the kindergartens and daycare uh, centers in the town where I live. From what I found, all of them are taking kids from 11th month. So basically, yeah, I mean, almost one year. So you don't really have that many options than to take this parental leave also for one year because otherwise who is the baby with yeah just to basically give you an idea of course if you want to work earlier or you need to work earlier you can probably always find options of some nannies there is a thing called tagesmutter in germany which is daily mother is somebody who is taking care of maybe like five kids at a time. So yeah, that's just to give you an idea. So this video is massive. I hope it was useful. I really wanted to give like as much information about all the different aspects when it comes to pregnancy in Germany. Again, I was really, really overwhelmed when I found out I was pregnant. There was just so many things to, to take into account, to research, but yeah, I hope that this video was useful. Again, do your own research, of course. Things might be slightly different depending on your location, but I think that general things, genu general like setup of a medical system around pregnancy should be more or less the same everywhere in Germany. So yeah, I hope that this information has been useful. Let me know down in the comments if you're pregnant or you're planning to move to Germany and planning to have kids here, what's your situation? And yeah, let me know if this video was useful or if you have any other questions that maybe I can help you with. I'm not an expert and I'm definitely still new in Germany myself, but by now I went through eight months of being pregnant in Germany, so maybe I will be able to give you some tips. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.